now we are talking with New York Congressman Nicole Maliotakis. Congressman, your reaction to Joe Biden's response to Iran? I mean, it's incredibly weak. What you're seeing is Iran continuing to poke the bear. They are testing Joe Biden to see what they can get away with. Now we see three American soldiers killed. Uh, there needs to be a strong response. There needs to be, uh, he should be saying that he's going to eradicate these military groups that Iran is using as proxies and go after the um, Iranian guard who is coordinating with them. But the other thing that needs to be done is we need to economically strangle Iran again. We saw that under President President Trump. He had a maximum pressure campaign that was working. And then here comes Joe Biden, who not only ends this maximum pressure campaign, he lifts sanctions, he reinstates waivers to civilians so they can continue to work on the Iran nuclear program. And we're seeing oil sales for Iran basically double, and their coffers are completely filled to be able to fund this type of terrorism. The House passed the Ships Act introduced uh, by Mike Lawler, I was a proud co-sponsor of this bill, that would go after the ports, the transporters, would go after the refineries for Iranian oil via sanctions. And mm. it, the Senate, we hope, will pass it because we need to reinstate that tougher sanctions to go after these individuals who are helping to enrich Iran. By the way, I just want to point out the economic implications of this as well. Obviously, we're mourning the death of three heroes this morning, three servicemen. But when you actually take a look at the impact of what's going on in the Red Sea as a result of this weakness, where the Houthi rebels are attacking ships like oil tankers and Maersk uh, shipping uh, vehicles uh, and uh, ships, they have to go around the African Horn to get to their destination uh, at, at a longer and more extended trip, that means higher expenses for them and likely going to pass it on to consumers. So you see oil at 77, 73 this morning. I'm wondering if we are about to see inflation get elevated again because of what's happening in the Red Sea. Yeah, and you see how this uh, has been expanding uh, in the Middle East. Uh, this is definitely concerning for our national security and the economy, but also Joe Biden's policies here at home are hurting us. Look what he just did last week when he decided to freeze permits for LNG export, exporting. Uh, this is really concerning, especially at a time when we're trying to support our allies in Europe so they're not dependent on Russian oil. Uh, exporting LNG to them was the way to do that, reduce that reliance. So he speaks right. out of both sides of his mouth. He wants to deter Russia, but at the same time, he hurts our ability to support our allies in a responsible, reasonable way. By the way, that would hurt, help the U.S. economy, right? Producing mm. American energy. Well, you've also been dealing with a border crisis in your backyard, Staten Island and Manhattan, Brooklyn. St. John's Episcopal Church in Staten Island now says it's no longer moving forward with the plan to uh, house migrants at the Canterbury House senior residence. You and local officials warned that the plan would diminish quality of life for senior citizens, and it violates lease agreements, Congresswoman. Assess the border impact right now and uh, your reaction to what you're hearing from this church. Yeah, you know, look, the sanctuary policy of New York City is basically allowing these individuals who've paid the drug cartels thousands of dollars to come into this country uh, to take over our schools, our national parks, our uh, senior residences. And that's exactly what they were trying to do, take away another senior resident in my district uh, and place uh, over 50 individuals, young men, um, from we weren't sure from where or they weren't properly vetted. And the, the, the problem was they were going to stick them in this facility with all these senior citizens. Citizens. How is that fair to those seniors who signed up for a senior residence that you're going to take away their community room to house these migrants? Um, we're, we're also passed legislation to cancel the lease at Floyd Bennett Field, a park that is very well used uh, by the people of Brooklyn. Uh, Senator Schumer again sitting on that legislation. But look, this crisis could be ended in today if the Democrats just wanted it to. Senator Schumer could pass our Border Security Act, which would reinstate the policies of President Trump that worked, or uh, our president can just rescind his executive orders. He took about 60 different actions that got us to this problem that we're seeing today. We never saw a crisis like this under President Trump, under even President Obama, Clinton, whoever, Republican yeah. or Democrat. This is a crisis of Joe Biden's making, and he can undo it today, or the American people just need to kick him out of office so we can take back um, our borders and we can secure them. Because look, what's happening in the Middle East? What happened in Afghanistan? Thousands of, of individuals, right, were released from the, the prison at that. Where are they 
coming now? Are they coming over our southern border? We don't know. Uh, that's the reality. Uh, 1.7 million gotaways have had zero interaction yeah. with our government or law enforcement, and they're in the country. We don't know who they are, where they are, what their intentions are. Well, Liz Peek, jump in, because this is the reason that the president cannot be trusted when he says, I've known the border is, is not secure for 10 years, and it's all Congress's fault. We know what he did on week one when he walked into the Oval Office in 2021, reversing all of those agreements that the Trump administration put in place with El Salvador, Guatemala, and Honduras, and Mexico to stop the flow at the border of Mexico. Maria, there's no question that this is 100% intentional. Uh, Nicole, I want to ask you, as one of the whips of the, con the conference, the Republican conference, is the deaths of these service people going to ignite some sense of urgency about funding Israel? Is there any talk about that, about what the response should be from the Republicans in Congress? Yeah, well, we're going to be back in Washington today and we'll be meeting tomorrow morning first thing and we will have these discussions on, on what we want, want to be pushing. Certainly, the, the support for Israel is being stalled by the Senate. We, we passed it out of the House. Of course, we wanted to pay for the bill, uh, which I think was responsible, but the Senate could have sent a clean uh, funding back. They didn't do anything. And, and the question is why? Why are they uh, holding that up? So I, I'm not sure exactly, uh, you know, it seems that everyone's so focused over in the Senate about Ukraine that they're willing to hold Israel, hold our southern border. Um, and, and that is a real problem, I think, for the American people and our great ally. Yeah. Congresswoman, we'll be watching your work. Thank you. Thank you. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis this morning.